Hey there, and welcome back to another My Hero Academia review. And today, as you may have noticed, I'm not talking about any one particular episode, but rather Season 5 as a whole. It's only been a couple of weeks since it ended, but honestly, I'm already missing it quite a lot, and so I thought I'd do a Season 5 wrap-up video to try and lessen my grief a little bit. Now, I would like to say that I have read the manga, and I'm aware of any relevant future plot points and details. And usually I'd say that I won't use the manga as a point of comparison, and I think that for individual episodes, that kind of thinking works well. But when you're talking about how the season worked as a whole, using the various different manga arcs as a point of comparison is quite a useful method. So yeah, there'll have to be some manga discussion peppered in here. So potential spoiler warnings, although probably not that many. Anyway, with all that being said, let's jump into the review. So the season started off with an arc that I feel like a lot of people found to be quite hit or miss. The joint training arc. And from what I can see from most discussion threads and opinion pieces, there are really only two schools of thought when it comes to this arc. You either think it was a great arc that showcased a lot of new or existing characters in fresh and interesting ways, giving depth and storyline to characters that didn't really have them before, or you think it sucks and it went on for way too long. And honestly, I can actually see where both sides of this argument are coming from. And at the risk of sounding like a bit of a fence sitter, I'd say that this arc was both good at points and bad at points. As I said before, it was good in that it allowed a lot of different characters time to shine. Usually I find the show is going to hyper focus on Deku, Bakugo or Todoroki, giving them a ton of development whilst leaving minimal screen time for any of their other classmates. And for the most part, I do think this way of doing things is okay. But it is always nice to see the secondary characters also get their moment in the sun. And this arc definitely did that in spades, having big developmental moments not just for the big three, but also Ida, Uraraka, Momo, Shinso, and Tokoyami, whilst also introducing a lot of minor story progression for a lot of other members of Class A, and even a few members of Class B. And on top of that, the action itself was for the most part pretty good, and each different matchup felt different and unique. But that being said, there were definitely a few lowlights, and I think principal among these is that the arc dragged. And it dragged hard in some areas. Whilst yes, it was nice to see a lot of growth between a bunch of the different characters, it also felt like a very big deviation from the main storyline. We started off the arc with the exciting conclusion of the battle between Endeavor and the High End Nomu and the ambush by Darby, but then we jump into some more school shenanigans that don't really have any stakes at all. It's so hard to care about them doing well in classes now that the stakes have been raised so much over the past couple of seasons, through the forest training arc and then the overhaul arc as well. So jumping back into a student training exercise that takes up half a season was quite a jarring experience and it felt like it slowed down the plot quite significantly. Plus, each different battle was really quite heavily reliant on inner monologues and flashback sequences. And whilst that was okay to a point, after a while you just kind of want to get some more action again, which is probably why certain battles like Bakugos or Todoroki's felt more special, because they emphasized the fighting and the matchups, whilst the fights involving Deku or Shinso felt more like it was all about their inner monologue, with action as a bit of a backdrop for it. This also happened a lot with Tokoyami and the Hawks flashbacks as well. And honestly, the failure in pacing felt like this in the manga as well, especially when it was coming out weekly. Whilst it had cool moments in action, it felt like it took forever when it was coming out week to week. But then you sit down and read it all at once, and it definitely felt like a more enriching and exciting experience. So realistically, if you sat down to binge watch this arc, I think you could look past the monologues and the flashback scenes a lot more and really enjoy it in a way you couldn't, when it was coming out weekly. But then after this arc ended, I feel like the wheels fell off the season a little bit. And don't get me wrong, I think both the Meta Liberation Army and Endeavor Agency arcs were really good, but they really weren't at their optimum in my opinion. We'll go chronologically, so first up, we'll talk about Endeavor. And this arc was good, and it did a lot of really interesting things. It gave the three main heroes a lot of excellent growth and pushed them up to another level in their quest to become pro heroes. It gave Endeavor a lot of interesting personal development and continued his attempted path of atonement, set up the future of Endeavor's story with the introduction of the mystery of Toya Todoroki, and also had a little bit of stuff with the Liberation Army and Hawks. And aside from some scenes of Endeavor sitting in his office trying to decipher Hawks' notes lingering perhaps a little too long for a couple of episodes, I think this arc did fairly well. Plus, the actual action scenes and mentoring scenes were straight fire. There was just so many really, really well done sequences all around this arc. But I do have quite a big negative with it. But we will come back to that in a second. Because before we talk about that, I want to talk a little bit about the Meta Liberation arc. <sighs> when this arc was good, oh, it was good. And when it wasn't, 
Uh, he wasn't. I mean, it did a whole lot right. It made Shigaraki a big deal and expanded his storyline and backstory, showing how he went from an abused child to an angsty edgelord to a raging lunatic. It filled in twice his backstory, worked through his trauma, and unveiled one of the most busted quirks ever. And it gave Togura a more expansive backstory and revealed she is a truly twisted individual. But, on the other hand, Spinner came out of it looking really dull and they completely cut out the character moments that he had in the manga for the most part. They made him less important than he really should have been, honestly. And as well, for all that Redestro and the Liberation Army were made out to be these dastardly puppet masters, they got clapped in embarrassing fashion. And I know this happens in the manga, but still, I just don't like it. Seriously, Redestro couldn't have looked worse here if they tried. It was just an embarrassment. They had thousands against a handful, and they got minced. It was really sad, honestly. But on a whole, it just makes me feel like this arc felt a little bit undercooked, like they could have used an extra episode or two. And it kind of makes me hate that stupid beach bikini episode, if I'm being honest. What a waste of time that was. But we'll go back to my problem with the Endeavor arc. I didn't like that in order to make sure the movie tie-in made sense, they swapped around the Endeavor and Villain arcs. And from a narrative perspective, it just doesn't make sense to me. It's a far better narrative contrast to see the joint training arc where the heroes power up, followed immediately with the villain equivalent, where two villain teams go head to head and also come out looking stronger. Plus, the actual timeline fits a lot better this way, as we see Deku talk about Daika City pre-work study program, and then the story gets dropped to follow Endeavor and Hawks. With Hawks' scenes directly spoiling what actually happens. God, it would have been so much better to go from Deku watching the Daika City attack report, to seeing the events of My Villain Academia ending with Hawks at the rally, before jumping into the Endeavor arc with the pre-existing knowledge. I think it would have made the season feel a lot less disjointed and more free-flowing. So yeah, overall I think the season did a lot of things right from a story point of view, aside from a few cuts here and there, and particularly in the villain arc. But ultimately I think it fumbled a bit because of a number of reasons. The first arc kind of struggled because it felt like it was a bit dull week to week and suffered with too much flashback exposition to show the characters new powers. And the two later arcs suffered due to cuts, or because the film tie-in rearranged how the season should flow. It just made the narrative as a whole suffer a lot more. That being said though, these problems could be somewhat addressed. I doubt they're going to switch back the two jumbled up arcs in any sort of Blu-ray release or something like that, but ultimately I think that's okay as long as you look past the story spoiling itself and feeling disjointed. And if I'm being honest, the first arc feels a lot better on a binge watch. I just don't think it's made for single episode consumption like some of the other arcs are. So in the end, this season was decent, but not great. The episode's content itself was for the most part really well done, but the structuring and prioritizing of different material was a major letdown. But as always, those are just my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think of the season? Like it? Hate it? Make sure to leave a comment and let me know.